we have chosen to speak about activism in general. Right. Um, so what I did, just quickly, I'll just read a small definition of activism, and then we can okay. talk from there. So what is activism? The policy or action of using vigorous campaigning to bring about political or social change. Now, whether that's whether we agree with that or not, that's a, as a starting point. We can. Uh, I mean, what's what's your when you think I, I, of what's your definition or when you think of activism? What does it mean for you? Yeah, uh, funnily enough, this I, I quite like uh, in a sense as like I'm surprised that this uh, already entered to the language in this way because yeah. activism for me would have been something like that activism that, that is born out of to act became something which is uh, directly associated with political kind of uh, activity yeah i mean social I, political activity and i agree with you if if i was to to define if i was asked to define activism I take it directly from act. It's to act. It's to it's to do something. Um, probably I don't relate it. Or, or probably most people would relate it to protesting, manifestation, campaigning in the street for an issue mm -hmm. or a cause. I don't think that activism is at all limited to this protesting or demonstration. But what I did think was really interesting in that description, which I probably hadn't thought about was the second part, which is to bring about some sort of political or social change in the sense yeah. that there is a... Um, you're trying to achieve something through activism, by definition. Right. Um, but the question it, is... What it, mm -hmm. Well, no, it's not just the act of jumping up and down and campaigning. It's actually having... It, or it should be having some sort of plan and having some sort of idea that it's going to actually bring about some sort of positive result or um, or change. And I think that's that's lost a lot in in today's sort of concept of what activism is. Yes, it's uh, that today activism, like many people can, in, in Greenpeace, for example, there is the possibility of registering yourself as online activist. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, as an online activist, you are doing something which for many of us would cons be considered to be the most passive kind of activity there is, which is to sit in front of the computer you know, in Facebook and so, you know, it's, it, there is this uh, Avas uh, activist yep. ac activism kind of initiative. Yeah, they send people these campaigns, and people can press a key that tell you know I su I support, and then they are activists. You know, yeah. <laughs> like they well, are activists by pressing. We've gone um, straight into it. We've gone straight. The discussion has gone straight into activism in two thousand and seventeen, in yeah. which. The internet is a huge part of this, and I agree, because I think that if you and I were having this discussion 20 years ago, apart from the fact that we wouldn't be Skyping and there wouldn't be this internet connection, but um, we would be talking about activism in a very different way. Uh, right. And these, in a very short period of time, I think it's actually the, the definition, or not so much the definition, but but the action of activism has changed in, in half a generation because of the internet. Um, so there are these words, clicktivism, slacktivism, you know, <laughs> which I don't mind at all. Because Lactivism, it, man. Well, it yeah. describes what you said. It's, 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 I mean, like many things, the internet has made it too easy to, to, to believe that you're engaged with an issue. But my view is that a lot of the times, not only is it ineffective, it's actually counterproductive. Mm. Um, in, in a sense, I, I want to read like the, the film that you suggested me, you commanded me to, to say, Among the Believers. Yeah. And it made me think a lot. It's like, it's a very, very frightening and for me, sad 
film about and it really makes you feel about the uh, like many many things that we will not define as activism in 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 our in in the open society in, in a sense activism we are associating with someone indeed with you know a megaphone in the streets and shouting or in or like making campaigns and uh, many of the transformations in society are being done below the mm -hmm. radar mm -hmm. amongst the believers that you're talking about is uh, set in Pakistan in a madrasa uh, called the Red Mosque in which they have a number of mosques around Pakistan and yeah. you would say it's a, um, a, a, a very extreme they practice very uh, they practice a very extreme form of Islam yeah they are Islamists and they kind of they take children like kids from families that are um, bringing them to the midrashah to mother to to learn the Quran and they learn in the Quran in a very like you know straightforward way and they are being with it they are being taught uh, messages and uh, about the and the belief that the Islam should rule, should rule Pakistan, should rule eventually the world. But um, so my question is, how have you linked? The, uh, how is this for you activism, or what's your so, yeah? So I I think that nowadays activism is somehow connected very much to uh, as we say campaigning and media. But especially nowadays, we are kind of uh, overwhelmed by uh, by messages from the media, from about diff. There are so many topics that we need to attend to that we, on a daily basis, we can. Hear we need to we need to save the frogs in the morning, save the oceans in the afternoon, and, yeah. and save yeah. ourselves by night. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's so many. Like here in Israel, there are so many issues burning issues on a daily basis that can, you know, and uh, so, so the, the media is fighting for our attention and activists are joining it in a sense that we, if we will have like 10 minutes to hear what you, someone will have to say about uh, saving frogs in the Amazonas, it's like, it is a lot of time <laughs> from, from, and, uh, and, as much as I, I'm involved in this kind of activity, uh, trying to capture people's attention in my writings, in my, um, I, I think that this is mainly like the, the, the real kind of movement or shift that you can create in society is being done in a gradual way, procedural way, and this is done, I think, mainly by by education. So mm -hmm. we we will not consider a teacher in the kindergarten as an activist. And uh, many of us will will think it's just it's a kind of not important kind of job, and. Uh, Relatively, it's not it's not very well paid in Israel and many other places. But are, are yeah. you saying that we are you saying that we should consider the kindergarten teacher as an activist? Is that we should yeah. open up the umbrella to to cover much more than my original definition? Yeah, I think that uh, that uh, the the it's matter of of focus. If if we focus on the effect, how much is it is effective? For the for a change, yeah. Um. I I think that campaigning and things like this, they kind of what what I think that what activists have in mind is that they will accumulate. Like I think this is what I see myself many many times thinking my by myself about about the activism that I'm involved with, that we will build a community. 
and it, this will be very people from our kind of ideological affinity will be drawn to it and we will gain more and more power and then we will be able to to make a change and yeah. this and we think about this change is something that we will see in our lifetime yeah and it's I, I well, think but more... no I mean we can sign a petition in the morning and we, we expect it to change to happen in the evening I mean yeah. that I'm being I'm being uh, very ironic I'm saying that what you're talking about there is the opposite of online petitions and online campaigning and, and things like this I and I agree with you I mean if if you go back to my definition and say the second part was about trying to achieve political or social change of course it must take not just days and hours and weeks but you know real change that actually is maintained and over a long period of time must take years must take generations uh, must take decades and must be um, consolidated over generations or else you just have flash in the pan sort of social or political movements that 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 come and go and and um, yeah don't last but I, I like your idea of expanding activism to um, include education and include a much wider range of um, range of people doing much more interesting things and I, I just want to say I mean I wasn't trying to be flippant when I said save the frog in the morning and save the oceans but I'm just saying that I personally and I know you and so many we are we are overwhelmed by this um, sort of avalanche of, of causes and, 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 and things thrown at us that that we need or that we're told we need to spend all of our time thinking about. My problem with that is that too often we have so many things thrown at us that we end up being totally overwhelmed and, and, and put everything to the side or put everything to the, the too hard basket and end up sort of not actually pursuing one or two issues that we're really, really engaged in and passionate about. Yeah. And I think that activism must come from a place of passion and it must come from a real place of ideological belief where you are prepared to possibly, or not like, you know, you must be prepared to sacrifice something in your life whether that be time, whether that be energy, whether that be relationships, whether that be something, to to for something that you really believe in, and that's not done by a simple you know like of a Facebook post or something like yeah. that. Um, I I find it fascinating. The like well, today I had the discussion relatively it's related to it because we so I, I'm. In, involved in uh, this kind of NGO in Israel, it's called the uh, Secular Secular Forum. Now, in, in Hebrew, in Judaism, secular mean uh, not like uh, irreligious. So the but uh, w the in this context, uh, the, the 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 Secular Forum is uh, made out was started by a. Um, group of parents uh, that started to see that there is more and more uh, religious messages in the you know in the school system and that we see in the in, in the past years where we have a re right wing religious uh, government in Israel that uh, and the, the minister of education is uh, he's religious and he pushed uh, to to get into the syllabus of kids from very young age many much more uh, religious messages and this is religious and you know religious in israel and in many places is tightly uh, connected with nationalism so uh, this sort of messages are really are both religious 
and political and heavy, heavily political loaded. Uh, parents of the liberal side of the ideological map are very worried about this uh, this shift naturally, and uh, and they would like now to uh, start a, a new kind of uh, schooling system in Israel that will be actually kind of atheist schooling system or at least secular. Um, schooling and so so that kids will be protected from religious kind of messages in the same way that they are kind of exposed to in the broad system there is a lot of discussion about it you know whether really liberal parents would like their to be to, to detach themselves from the from the big education system and so there is a lot, a lot of discussion about this but just the fact that as so I'm involved in speaking with people to try to explain them how it's important for them to take a part in it. Basically, I don't have kids, but parents for kids who are liberal and, and secular should really be worried about it. And they, are, so, they express, they express their worries, but you hear how much it's difficult for people to say, okay, we'll take a part in it. Are you, like, are you saying that your discussion with people, is that your, I mean, is that part of your activism? That, that's how you define also what you, what you do in, uh, is your activism? Yeah, I, say, I think that part of my activism is, is, uh, is try, you know, the, the only thing that I, I, I think it's, uh, that I, I'm, the, the section that I will define that is part of my activism is me indeed talking with other people, trying to yeah. explain them how it is important for them to be more active about what is happening around them. I mean, the reason I, the reason I ask that is that sounds like one-on-one -on -one contact when you're actually physically speaking to and engage with another person sounds to me a whole lot more effective way of activism than slacktivism as we were talking about you know and <laughs> signing things that perhaps or liking things that are just liking it for, for likes sake i think that's the you know when pulling pulling the discussion back to what was the original idea of activism before the internet before and probably it was a lot stronger in protests and demonstrations in the street, what that needed was real commitment, real passion, and real sacrifice, again, of your time or of your um, existing commitments. It meant you actually had to leave your home, go somewhere, meet other people, come together for a, for a common cause, and then uh, manifest those ideas into something, you know, attempt to manifest those ideas into something concrete. And I think that that's, a, that's what has been lost a lot. And I guess m me personally, when I, I, I can never say that when I was a, a, a child or a teenager or even in my early 20s, I didn't engage in any sort of activism, I, or, not organised activism, I guess. And then I actually probably was pushed away or found myself moving away from organised groups and organised activism. Because I think that there's also a big negative that can, can, can come from this group dynamic, which is just inherent with groups, which is sort of not really having your own individual thought either. It's going along with what a, a, a group um, believes or what and, and as a member of that group you're almost told what to to believe or what to think yeah um, and I, I remember when I was in my 20s and I decided to go to my first demonstration in in Melbourne in Australia and it was about indigenous um, issues something that I wanted to that I believed in yes but I also wanted to discover more about so I went there with both a passion, but also a curiosity. And halfway, so they had speakers and they had performers and they had really engaged people. 
Then halfway through the demonstration, everything changed and, and it was hijacked by another group of people that wanted to discuss other issues. And they started handing around, you know, signs for something entirely different that had nothing to do with Indigenous issues. I can't remember what they were demonstrating for. And then all of a sudden, all of these hundreds of people that were there because they were supposedly passionate about Indigenous issues were now walking down the street holding signs of something entirely different and demonstrating for that. Yeah. And I, it, you know, for me who likes to think deeply about issues before I become engaged and then, you know, put my heart and soul into them, I, 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 I left, I went home. I, I thought this is not, this group dynamic is nothing that I really want to be a part of because it can also easily be hijacked and this idea that just because you believe in something means that you should also believe in this, this, this and this. Um, and, and I don't think promotes um, free thought and free thinking. And I, I also think it's counterproductive in a lot of ways. Um, Indeed, but, but it's, it's another... We need also to, to, to remember the kind of... Uh, well, in the in this type of activism that I'm into, so my, uh, the, the sort of things that I'm interested in are uh, not directly related to human rights, for example, because they are kind of they speak more about, in a sense, we in, in Israel we had we need to step one we take several steps back and talk about like, you know, more basic kind of values and issues. Yep. And um, which are, in that case, related to, to education. What what do you teach kids about? What do you teach them that God created the universe and uh, and that uh, that we, that Jews are the chosen people and he, God decided that Israel will be their land. And this is what is now being taught in school. Or you're going to teach them facts you know the reality and so it's a very but it's very yeah. interesting i think that maybe i mean of course you've spent so much time outside of israel you spent almost a decade in europe um but i perhaps think that sometimes now that you've been back in israel i think sometimes it, it can be easy um perhaps to really forget what a particular and unique case Israel is compared to the, the rest or to other parts of, of the world. Would you say that in Israel, when you talk amongst friends or colleagues or just people in the street, does activists in Israel, do most people think of it in a religious sense? Is it, is it towards religious activism? Exactly. Like, so the, the, so the, the, the main, the, the, like the, the religious kind of activism in Israel is thriving. It's uh, it's heavily funded also. They have a lot of money. And they also, this is exactly what I wanted related to what you said before, they are also highly disciplined and they really cooperate and they, for their kind of, um, you know, their goals, they maybe they do have some kind of you know they kind of arguments for and against many things that they are doing but when they go out and do activism they really look kind of as a as one unit while in the sort of activism that i like the people that i meet um as you said, like you, you were, you were, um, you, did, you still wanted to be an individual and to think for yourself, and you wanted that people, I guess that that people that uh, tell you about the uh, like the reasons for doing this kind of activism will talk to to your rationality, will explain to you why it's important and and why we and. Uh, and people from the liberal side are v highly critical. So everything should be really explained to their bottom. And we spend a lot of time arguing about many of the aspects 
of every kind of little thing that we need to cooperate in. Yeah. So the, I, I think that what people are kind of missing in the, so the, in, there, are ma in, there are many groups of activism. What people are many times missing in the, in the idea of activism is like to act, you need to, yeah. to, to do something, you know, at least tiny kind of movement towards the, the goal. Yeah. And, um, and I think that in the, at least in the liberal part, people are too much obsessed about each and every tiny bit of detail along the way. And, and, and they, they need to feel sure that every, everything falls in the right places for them. Mm -hmm. And they, they wanted to talk you know, to their senses. You, know, you, will, you need to, 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 be, uh, to uh, address the reason and rationality. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I think in order to create a change, it's, very, it's a great challenge. In the... are, are, we, are you and I too cynical? Like we started the discussion talking about uh, online petitions mm -hmm. and, and um, I personally, I don't, I, I could count on one hand the number of online petitions that I've signed. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't actively seek out to, to, to sign these online petitions. But are we being too cynical? I mean, there still must be the petitions and movements of, pe I mean, they still absolutely can uh, make change or can, can contribute to change, can they not? Or are we just dismissing um, uh, online activism? Are we dismissing it as something as a waste of time that's counterproductive, that makes us feel like we're contributing when we're really not? Or is there still, or is there, I mean, I, I'll ask the question then answer the question. I mean, I absolutely still believe there is a role and I believe a big role that online and internet and so forth can play. Um, but I think it needs to be refined and targeted and somehow uh, there's so much noise and things out there that it, it's easy to be, to be, for the important things to be lost amongst so many things. Um, but I have seen with my own eyes, I've been a part of movements and things and raising funds and raising people's ideas that have actually um, resulted in something concrete that, 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 that has assisted real human beings, that life has, people's lives have been made better through things that originated from the internet, whether that be from um, raising awareness or raising funds and things yeah. like this. So I think that probably a balance across the board from demonstrations, from education, from online to petitions. I mean, in the end, what I think probably we need to take the discussion is, is how does change happen? You know, change happens either as a result of people or predominantly change only happens as a result of people in power making change right. like we can jump you and i can jump up and down for all we like and we can make documentaries and we can speak to our neighbors as much as we like but real change happens when people in power um, make decisions so the change has got to be in getting to the people in power in electing the people in power or in creating movements of people that overthrow people in power and and change the the status quo or else we're kind of just talking into the into the wind. Um, yeah. What? Yeah, I think that there are the the, the in, indeed we, we activism in how we think about it is mainly addressing grown people and trying to take their attention to give money or to do something for a certain cause. And my and this is a, this is certainly important part of bringing a change. And but 
my point is that what we are missing and uh, it's uh, is indeed the the part of the change is is a change that will be um should be as we as I said before pre prepared over many years yeah and if um but, but the the thing is that indeed this is the hardest kind of activism to go to be a teacher on a daily basis going to school and teach kids about values about science about yeah. morality about the future of the planet about environment this is well i think i think it can be difficult for a number of reasons but two main the first reason is that as a teacher or an educator, a lot of the time you don't then, like your student then goes out into the world and you lose contact with these people and you don't know. For example, I'm a documentary filmmaker. Most of the screenings, like all I can do is I can only make the film yeah. and I can show the film. Um, people always ask me, what has, like, has anything changed as a result of your film? Um, and apart from it being almost, I mean, I can, I can give some small specific examples, yes, but do I know what every individual that, that watched that film, do I know what they did after it? Do I know what they thought after it? Do I know what they, the, the discussions that they had after it? I have no idea. As a student, as a teacher that teaches students, the student then leaves the school and then goes out into the world to become the next doctors, lawyers, thinkers, philosophers, or nothing. But the role of the teacher is doing the best job in, in informing and educating, but it's impossible to control what then happens um, yeah. beyond that. And then the biggest thing that's impossible to control is that if we believe that what we are doing is for the long term, most probably the tangible result won't happen until you and I are 20 feet under the ground. <laughs> Or where we want to to be of course we we can strive for and of course we want to uh, achieve goals big concrete goals in our lifetime but perhaps you know it's all just part of a big the way i see i mean all you and i are just you know specks in this in this in this universe over it and 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 an, uh, an infinity we're just like a big wave and we're just a tiny, tiny push in this, or a, a tiny speck in this wave. The wave has been going a lot longer than we were here and will continue for a lot longer than we're gone. And all we can do is just contribute in our small way and, and perhaps just contribute to this wave in a, in a, in a very small way. I think that's the, the best we can um, attempt to yeah, achieve in the work that we do. Yeah, so, but but look uh, look again in the in the mullah that is presented in the or one of the teachers that you, you, you know this is the thing that we look and we look at the at, at the film among the believers and uh, this uh, the teacher there of Quran um, <laughs> in terms of the like how we we. This, we, we talk about activism, it will be strange for us to call him an activist. He's like a teacher of Quran and an activism yeah. should be for, you know, for... His opponents. In a sense. And, uh, but what he creates over time is that he perpetuates his ideas, which are very, very you know, ancient ideas about Islam or whatever, to many, many minds, and he kind of instilled them. So we don't like to think about this way because in uh, we, we certainly, as you confessed, like we don't think about uh, being part of a group. We don't. We wouldn't like to be indoctr indoctrinated. And we don't like to, to think that we should indoctrinate other people about other, our ideology. And 
and and I think that this like we certainly need to think okay we, we kind of uh, we we have these limitations in a sense in our discussion we we don't like the idea of indoctrination we don't like being brainwashed to brainwash other people that what we do is the best solution for the universe of the, of the world because in this way we are kind of we are doing the same kind of activism that is done in the in the red mask in in the in the film for example and uh, and on, a, on the other way um the the change that is brought about by um, by trying to convince grown-ups to take a part of a certain cause and be active about it is it's this it's for especially for rational you know, people it's very difficult but in a sense we narrowed our um sp the space of movement uh, about 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 bringing a change and it's something that I think that we should consider like is it possible in this kind of limited space that we have created over generations in liberalism to bring a to bring a change or have we with the with kind of growing awareness with the growing um, of of idealism, of liberal idealism, we brought more and more limitations over how to create a change. When, because when we look back about huge, like big changes in human history, they, I, there are not many changes that were done um, in a sense, peacefully. Like, do you have any? I don't have many kind of, you know, the secularism of Europe was brought by Na the Napoleon Wars. Well, I think just uh, the definition. I mean, we use the word "fight" for your, yeah. own, you know, "fight for change," "fight for your rights." Now. It really does come from that. It's not just a word. You, you do really have to fight um, for what you believe because ultimately you are challenging... The idea is that you are challenging people that, have, that think differently to you or that, that have a, a, an ulterior motive or have some other um, self-interest. Yeah. And you, to, in order to, to, to change, you must topple or defeat or... A, a, another idea and uh, I guess yeah I mean you, you need to fight for things and I mean it doesn't need to be a, a war but you the minute you actually the majority of times I guess what what is interesting for me is that every movement or everything that's actually become adopted by any society must have started as a fringe idea it must have started as a small idea it must have started as something that was not accepted by the masses. And that over, and this is why I, I mean, I, I now consider myself, I mean, my, my life is quite heavily engaged in a form of activism, I would say. And I think about this often, that, that some ideas that you have, or every idea, must have started from something small. And it must have, you need momentum, you need people, you need mass, you need change of ideas, and that needs to take time until your idea, for example, uh, homosexuality in many parts of the world, that was, you know, you, you could be burnt at the stake however many centuries ago for that crime. It, unfortunately, not in my country, Australia, it's still, um, you, you can't be legally married in Australia. But things have changed very much in the past generations where things that were not accepted and now accepted by a mainstream. And you do need to, you know, you need to fight, though there wasn't a war for that. There's been many people that, 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 that had to fight for these rights. And I think that very much most of these sorts of change do need some sort of 
um, more than protest, more than um, assembly of people. It needs sacrifice um, in lots of ways. But I, I do believe that there's a great song um, by an Australian musician called From Little Things, Big Things Grow. And um, everything must, must start as a small thing originally um, until it somehow evolves or you know, manifests itself to be part of the, not the fringe, but to be part of the, the, the wider acceptance. Um, so these things are going to take time. I, I just wanted to ask you about one thing, which is, um, I'm not in Israel. For me, activism, when I think of that, I think of human rights, environmental issues. And I'm generally then drawn to my image of a young person who perhaps has dreadlocks and is perhaps, you know, an alternative person on the left and a hippie. You know, this is how society has, rightly or wrongly, um, defined or the image of an activist. Yeah. Of left wing. <laughs> of the le now, I, I have a lot of problems with this, both the def like I, the image, even me myself. I mean, I become quite intimidated when I see people much more extreme than myself supporting issues that I really strongly believe. So I can only imagine it must be so much more intimidating for others who are not engaged in these issues, but perhaps are interested to actually stop them from being engaged in the, in the very first place. Um, and I see demonstrations that are sort of sab sabotaged in many ways by a real, real fringe extreme that stop a general public sometimes from really engaging in issues that should be mainstream issues. Saving our planet should be a mainstream issue. Basic fundamental human rights for people should be mainstream clean water, rights to education. You know, these are things that it shouldn't be just for the domain of the so-called left fringe to be passionate about. Um, so I, I, I sometimes feel that there can also be a, a detrimental effect to, to these sort of being kept in the fringe and not being actually allowed into the mainstream um, just as a result of, of this image of this sort of tree-hugging lefty hippie as being someone that should be interested in, in, main, in, in human right and environmental issues, where it should be something that really touches the heart and minds of, of any thinking person. Yeah. The, and, and I think that indeed what, what's, uh, you know, the, the, we, talking about cynicism, like the, the hippie movement uh, in the States, like started with this kind of dreadlocked and beautiful um, young people that were talking a lot about love and peace and and they became the you know the the bourgeois the the uh, of uh, the yuppies of of of, uh, of of the states after they crossed their 30s you know they just settled down and uh, many of them not, uh, not all of them but and uh, and and we kind of, uh, we, it's, it's a cliche that when you are, you can be activist when you are young, but then at a certain point you just, you know, settle for the facts and you let go of, of the things. And indeed many, you know, my, when I talk with my parents about what I'm doing, they will certainly will not accept it. It will, it will seem like futile, like. Why? 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 You know, and um, and I what I'm and you see a lot of people, other people, grown people, uh, just in a in a desperate state of saying there there is no chance for Israel or for the world or and. But and and then you need to 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 ask them. I think I think part of the of the of uh, the weakness that we have that pe that un non-religious people have 
in comparison to religious people, to fanatics, to <laughs> fundamentalists, is uh, that we we lack belief in a sense. You know, belief can be a belief in gods and whatever deities and unicorns or whatever. But but belief is also something which is it's not only for supernatural beings or things. Belief is also your approach towards the towards the unknown future. Absolutely. So, I mean, a, so a belief can be I can believe that what I'm doing can have some sort of effect or change. Yeah. I I must believe in what I'm doing or else it makes it pretty bloody hard to get up in the morning and spend a lot of your time doing it, whatever it is. Yeah. You must uh, believe in it. Um, believe that it's interesting, believe that it's worthwhile, believe that there's nothing better to do, believe that it's going to make some change. You know, there's a thousand different things about what you can believe, but it's, we don't just get up and do something as a robot. We, we make con Most of us who are lucky enough have the ability to make conscious choices in our life as to how we spend a lot of our time. So we must believe, um, yeah, beyond a religious sense of what the word belief means. Yeah. And, uh, and w when I speak with, the, the, I think, uh, important practice, important kind of question that I try to raise is what is your approach toward the future? In a sense, people, okay, I, I'm not an activist. What is really hiding? With, with, like, I'm, I'm not taking a real active, active part. When I say activist, I'm not taking active part in any kind of bringing, you know, trying to uh, bring forward the political and social uh, view that I, uh, that I believe in, that I think it's... Uh, and uh, I, I think that putting aside the, the fact that so there are many excuses, when you kind of sweep away the excuses, what is uh, hiding is that people, most people are like, they, they, they don't believe they, the situation can change. And what, what, what they think is that by not believing, they are rational. They, it's, uh, we, they make a rational kind of judgment of reality. What they lack, I think, to, 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 like to, to, to see, what they, what they don't see is, is that this is by itself, it's, this is a belief. You know, we, like, none of us, especially people you know, that are secular, believe in the real, the real ability to see the future. We are just left with speculations and beliefs about the future. And we can choose our kind of attitude toward the future. And what many people, I think, the, the choice that they're subconsciously are doing is that the situation would just get worse. And, uh, and what I think that part of the, and this is my main point, part of the reason that they believe the situation will just get worse is because certain type of activism, like many of the activism is bringing, is kind of stressing the fact that we are in a very hysterical moment in history. Yeah. Yeah. And we should be afraid and we should yeah. do something because the things are going to collapse and the world yeah. is going to explode. And, uh, and well, I, uh, I think and this, that... Sorry. And, and I, I think that for some, for some people it helps to kind of, okay, well, I need to do something. But I think for many people it, it puts them in a kind of in a state that they just fear they are afraid and they think that we are doomed. And then this kind of activism becomes a certain, yeah. you know, a modern way of, of bad, you know, of, uh, of, of, of prophecy of, of, of from the apocalyptic uh, sense. But know. in another way, in another way, what I find is that it, it, it is hypocritical in many ways that you find that, that, 
uh, it's a fringe protesting against another fringe, like a fanatic, uh, um, like a, a, an extremist. Um, for, I'll just give an example. Uh, in some recent, uh, in, in my city in Melbourne, um, we had a, a far right group demonstrating um, anti-Islam and, and, and many, you know, nationalist sort of movement. And so they come and they demonstrate, and then there's a counter demonstration that's organised by the extreme far left. Both of them are covering their, you know, their face. The, 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 the far right are covering their face with the Australian flag. The far left are covering their face with uh, masks, and, and they end up clashing and fighting on the street, in the news. Mums and dads are sitting at home watching this violence, and will their natural inclination will be to not introduce their children to be engaged in these issues. Their inclination will be to turn off and just say they're both as radical and both as bad as each other, let's say. And it doesn't actually look at any of the any of the issues. But most of these issues are not, or they shouldn't be, um, extreme. They are m very mainstream issues which are covered by so much of, um, uh, you know, activism, let's say. I, my first film that I made was in Papua New Guinea, looking at illegal logging. So international companies coming in, exploiting local people, cutting down their trees, destroying their environment, destroying their water system, bringing disease, you know, the normal story that sort of we've heard so often. Um, but at its, at its real core, for me, it's, it's a very simple issue. It's not for the, it's not for the fringes. It's a, and, and if, if I ask two people in Australia, so this timber was coming to Australia and we use, our, we use this timber to make our furniture. Now, if I was to ask two people in Australia, anyone, doesn't matter if you're on the left or the right or the centre or not engaged or uh, extreme activist. And I said, here are two pieces of timber. One of them has been logged in a sustainable way in which the local people were suitably paid, their river system was not destroyed, their hunting area was not um, also destroyed in the process. Or here's another bit of timber in which illegal companies have come in, exploited locals, destroyed their water systems, destroyed their hunting grounds. There is no one that would say that I want my furniture made out of the second piece of timber. But that's not how environmental issues are dealt with, at least in 2017. We have the majority of people who are either disinterested not engaged or just ambivalent to these sorts of issues. And then we have a small fringe that jump up and down and try to ram this home down people's throat that they need to be engaged and need to care. And, 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 but there is a huge gap between this. And what ultimately happens is, that, I mean, five years later, nothing has improved in that particular situation. So it's not effective. So we can, we can have as many protests as we want and sign as many petitions. The, go, the, the, the real value of activism is that it manifests into some sort of change. And when we were talking about power, like it's only people in power or only groups of people, as in populations, that can rise and topple power, we have a situation in the United States where the President of the United States does not believe in climate change, and so he has put, he, he's disregarded so much science and work and, and, and so much uh, passion by uh, and scientists and activists and everybody else and environmentalists, and the main person in power has pulled out of the Paris Accord, and he basically holds the... the, the, the the future of the United States, or which way they go in these issues, in his hand. So we can sign as many petitions as we want, we can jump up and down as we want, we can have as many discussions as we want, but unless something actually manifests into some sort of change, it's perhaps no better than, 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 than not engaging in the, 
in the first place. So for me, I think that we need to become so much smarter with our activism. We need to become much more efficient. We need to find ways of engaging <laughs> common people with general, what should be mainstream issues, bring them away from the fringes, bring them on the table and engage real people. And for me, the real radical of 2017 is, is not the extreme right. It's not the extreme left or the extreme right. The real radical is not someone in the centre. The real radical is someone that actually thinks independently, looks at every issue and is prepared to judge everything on its own uh, values, whether it be left, whether it be right, and actually stand up for what they truly believe in. And I think that is the only way that things change, when we actually engage with people and we actually are passionate about things. And that's the only way that we, as I'm not the United States president, can, can manifest some sort of change in this, uh, in this world. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Omar Soup, it's been a pleasure. Indeed. And, and I think what's also super interesting, let's just for a moment reflect on what we are doing right at this moment. I'm in Morocco, you're in Israel. For one hour we've spoken about this issue. I would like to continue talking about these issues. But what I thought was important was to record these discussions because in a way I feel that this is another form of, you know, you said it much more better than I could, which is it's education, it's, it's informing, which is in another way its own form of activism. So if there is one human being that is actually watching at this moment and has appreciated the discussion that you and I have had, I can say that we are activists. What we are doing as part of this is a form of activism. And uh, I encourage us to continue and others that, that hear us to, I hope you found it somewhat interesting and engaging and uh, look forward to, to continuing the chat about something new very soon. Yeah, I also. Cool. Yeah, cool. Good See luck. you next time. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>